What up, what up, it's Alvin Lee Anyumba, aka Alvin Lee Fitness, aka Bazoo Fitness, my friend. You're watching Millennial on the Move. There's a difference. When people say gym instructor is different from a, gym, uh, a fitness coach, it's, there's a big difference. I'm a fitness coach, a gym instructor is the one you're going to find at the gym who's going to take you through the workouts, let's say it's Zumba, aerobics, or the workouts of the day, whether it's, uh, whether it's CrossFit or anything of a sort. But a fitness coach is one who literally coaches you. Coaching is beyond. It's, we're looking at performance, psychology, uh, your dieting, how it affects your work, how uh, your workout affects your rest. We're coaching you through all that. And, it's a big deal. So, I'm a fitness coach. Do not insult me by calling me a gym instructor. That's not me, all right? <laughs> to be what I am right now, number one, passion you have to have passion in it number two you're going to do your studies in it look at a doctor a doctor is one to cure you look at your fitness coach as a preventive doctor we are preventing those uh, lifestyle diseases and uh, you will need to do your studies you need to do your certification you can either do your degree in fitness uh, uh, what do you, there are many fitness uh, degrees out there the, you can even go all up to masters or you can do your certification in uh, uh, in fitness courses like we have personal trainer certification we have uh, corrective exercise certification uh, we have certification for people who only train pregnant ladies you know, so those are the different uh, uh, places there. And on top of that, you can also go further and not only be a personal trainer, but also be a nutritionist. Not just a clinical nutritionist, you're looking at fitness nutrition because there's a difference. These are people who are active and working. So you have to learn how to also create their diet according to their work output in the gym and their performance. So that's also what you're looking at. And then you have to continuously, just like a lawyer, lawyers never stop reading. You have to continuously keep reading, keep researching, because science changes every day. It's just like, like technology. If you're left in the old, age, old days, then you're going to be misinformed, because whatever was, whatever was the, the thing uh, a couple of years ago, right now it becomes a myth, you know? So you have to keep studying and then experience, experience, experience. Experience. Stick to the craft, keep perfecting yourself, keep learning, keep socializing with people above you and just learn. Be a sponge, absorb and be the best that you can be. Alright, thank you very much. For those who think that this is easy, now let me shock you. I wake up at 3.30 a.m. from Monday to Thursday every week, right? 3.30 a.m. Why do I wake up at that time yet have to be at the gym at 5? It's because me, I do my devotion, my morning devotion. That's number one. And then I hate being late. I have to be on time for my clients. I have to prepare mentally to be at the gym on time. Then once I'm at the gym on time, I train my clients, my physical clients at the gym. These are uh, outside clients that I bring into the gym because I'm affiliated with, with where I am right now with this gym so I have to bring my clients from outside and I train them here then in between that time I also have online clients who have been training on zoom ever since COVID happened and uh, it has it's actually a good thing that it happened because I was going towards online training and 
Kenyans couldn't accept it or believe in it. So when COVID came and people spent two months and looked at their stomach, then they're like, okay, I think let me give it a try. And when they gave it a try, it's now been six months and they've not left. Six months. So I'm happy with that I'm training people from the diaspora. I'm training people from Nakuru, Kisumu, Watamu. People who also can't make it to the gym and people who have a busy lifestyle in that the commute was a lot of the time traffic jam and all that stuff so it's good so i have physical plans early in the morning i'm done with all my physical plans in the morning then i have uh two classes online classes in the morning and two in the evening but between that like the time i'm having this interview right now between that is uh when i feed i relax and uh or do any form of research if i'm feeling uh uh what do you call it well rested we're in different centuries uh, 20 centuries and below we're looking at uh the industrial phase whereby you literally have to go to school be a lawyer get out go to school be an engineer get out and build the roads uh keep building uh what do you call it um j building the nation literally that phase has gone we're now in the era of skills a kid can wake up one day go on youtube learn how to code and he will be paid so much with no experience as long as his work is good a company will actually get him because he has more experience he does a better job than a person who even actually went to school for it and is doing a mediocre work so people nowadays people yes look at cvs it's just i think it's just for a first off but then what matters is work output and the degree of your skill so you have to try and explain to your parents that the times have changed my friend we're in a new century and uh, things are different and then give show them examples of people who have made it without even uh, completing their studies or just concentrating on uh, just concentrating on uh, the things that they love the most there are very many there are very many people you know we are getting out of the rat race of work home work home school such stuff you can still make a living with your skills. Even those guys who are doing, who go to work, come home, work on their skill, eventually their skill actually takes over their work and they drop work and they get paid better by just doing their skill. I was as a kid very interesting number one I was a very cheeky kid uh, I don't know whether I was stubborn I was obedient but very curious at the same time and cheeky that one I got I think from my father or something was that I loved a lot of fun I was very adventurous um, and um, I loved trying out things that looked very challenging to do because it made me discover who I am so when I grew, growing up, I was so much into swimming, so I did swimming. Then I wanted to do something more athletic. Not that swimming is not athletic, but I mean something more physical. And I tried basketball when I was in uh, Form 1. And uh, I got a sausage finger from it, and I said, it's not for me. Funny thing is that two years later, I do rugby, and I get sausage fingers, and I stick to it. You know, So that was just a funny thing. So I was... I was doing competitive rugby and swimming. Rugby all the way till campus and swimming I did all the way till the end of high school. I actually did my high school in uh, Uganda and also my primary in Uganda, all that. But I'm fully Kenyan. It's just that my parents were working there. So that's where I lived. So I did my Form 1 till Form 6 and I was doing swimming and rugby most of it. And when I came here, I joined Strathmore University doing uh, uh, my BCom. And uh, at that time, I started with swimming, but it, I had to choose between swimming and rugby. Then I went to rugby. Then as I went to rugby, I played for Impala before Strathmore. Then I went to Strathmore, did uh, rugby again. 
then dropped rugby because I was so much interested in modeling. You see how it goes? Because <laughs> I'm in the arts, I love arts, that's for sure. So I was so much interested in modeling, so I, and rugby and modeling used to happen around the same time, practice in the evenings. But then I'm also a businessman. We used to live in Mombasa, so I used to commute all day from Mombasa to Uganda for school. That was it. But then, since I was in the land of Mabuyu, I used to make sure I get... By that time, polythene papers were not banned, so it was the cowboy, the polythene paper with cowboy. I used to fill it up with Mabuyu and sell it for, I think, a thousand percent profit <laughs> in Uganda. And they used to sell out in less than a week.